Greetings. Today we're going to be looking into the linear transport equation, which is one big formula that covers any phenomena that behaves sufficiently similar to fluid flow. We've already seen how fluid flow and electrical flow behave in very similar ways and even follow some of the same equations. So let's start with those. For fluid flow, current flowing through a pipe is defined in terms of what's moving as time passes. Current is rate of change in volume of the fluid, which is how we measure how much is flowing per unit of time. And what causes that fluid to flow? If you've got a difference in pressure from one side of the pipe to the other, let's say you've got a high pressure zone on one side and a low pressure zone on the other side, that difference in pressure is what's pushing the current through. The current's going to flow from the high pressure zone towards the low pressure zone. And you could interpret that as the difference in pressure causes current to flow, or you could interpret that as the flow through a pipe with resistance causes the pressure to drop. Either way makes sense. But the equation tying those together is our usual simplified Bernoulli equation. Delta pressure equals negative IR. The more difference in pressure there is, the faster fluid is going to flow. The negative sign just signifies direction. Current's going to flow from high pressure to low pressure. And resistance is the level of difficulty to get through this pipe. If we take a look at electrical circuits, we've got a very similar phenomenon. We've got current, electrical current flowing through this resistor. And we're still defining current as how much flows per second. Current is a rate of change, change in something per second, per time. But what's flowing here is not volume of fluid. We wouldn't want to measure the volume of electrons. Instead, we describe it as charge, delta Q, delta charge, per second. And in this case, current is also being pushed through by a difference, but not a difference in pressure, a difference in voltage, which is like the electrical equivalent of pressure. So if we have a high voltage zone on one side of the resistor and a low voltage zone on the other side, the difference in voltage pushes current through from high voltage to low voltage. Same idea, you could think of the current flowing through the resistor as causing a drop in voltage, or you could think of the voltage difference as what's pushing the current through. And these are governed by essentially the same equation. Delta voltage for the resistor equals negative IR. More difference in voltage causes faster current to flow. Negative sign again signifies direction. Direction of current is going to be flowing from the high voltage zone towards the low voltage zone. And then R is the level of difficulty to get through that resistor. Same essential structure. We just call this the Bernoulli equation and we call this Ohm's law. But in both cases we've got some difference from one side to the other pushing something to flow through and the more difference there is the faster the flow is going to be. Thermal currents it turns out follow the exact same behavior. If you've got a wall between let's say two rooms you're going to have heat flowing from one side of the wall to the other because of a difference. In this case, though, the difference is not pressure or volume, but what causes a heat to flow from one, from one place to another is a difference in temperature. If you've got a high temperature region and a low temperature region, heat is going to flow across the barrier from the high temperature zone to the low temperature zone, in spite of the fact that this wall makes it difficult to flow, so this wall has a thermal resistance. And these are governed by the exact same structure of equation. The more difference in temperature is, the faster heat is going to flow. In this case, we're going to define thermal current as, again, change in what's flowing, although in this case, what's flowing is energy over a change in time. Since this is energy over time, that's also the definition of power. So thermal current is technically power energy transferred per second. And if we look at the same structure of equation, we still have the difference in temperature is what's pushing the current through, 
So we should expect the same sort of equation. Delta temperature, the difference in what's pushing it, equals negative IR. More difference in temperature means faster heat flow. The negative sign signifies direction from high temperature to low temperature. And R is the level of difficulty for that wall. So it looks like all three of these situations, and more as well, follow this exact same structure. Another example that often shows up is osmosis, osmotic flow. If you've got some cell membrane, what's going to cause osmotic flow is if you have a difference in concentration. If you've got high concentration of some molecule on one side, and low concentration of that same molecule on the other side, you're going to get osmotic flow, molecules jumping across the cell membrane from high concentration zone to low concentration zone. And that's governed by the same structure of equation as well. Delta concentration is going to equal negative osmotic flow times resistance to the cell membrane. So since all of these examples and more follow the same general structure of the equation, just different meanings of the variables from situation to situation, the idea of linear transport equation is we can set up one big equation that describes all of these cases. So let's try that. These all look like delta something equals negative IR. So in general, we're going to write that as delta capital phi equals negative IR, where the phi here represents what we call the potential. The potential in all these cases is just the difference that's pushing current through the barrier. So the fluid flow potential would be pressure, or more generally energy density. The electrical potential would be voltage. In fact, electrical potential is often used as a name for voltage. And the thermal potential would be temperature, the osmotic potential would be concentration, and so on. So this is one way of writing the linear transport equation. All these examples are delta potential equals negative current times resistance. And the meaning of those variables and the units of measurement vary from situation to situation, but it's always the same structure. We can get even more detail on this, though, by looking at resistance in more detail as well. If we investigate what causes resistance, there are essentially three factors that go into that. One of them is the distance traveled by the current. So for a pipe or a wire, that would be the length, how far the stuff travels along that pipe or wire. For a wall or a cell membrane, that would involve thickness. The thicker the wall is, the further the heat has to travel. So more length or more thickness means more resistance. And we usually write that as a delta x. Delta x just being the length or thickness, how far the stuff has to travel to get from one side to the other of the barrier. The area also makes a difference. So a wider pipe or a thicker wire is going to have less resistance. Likewise, a wall with more surface area is going to have less resistance because there's more places for heat to go through. So more area should mean less resistance, so we should put area in the denominator here. And there's also a factor called conductivity, which represents the properties of the material itself. Some materials are easier for heat to flow through. Some materials are easy for electricity to flow through. Some fluids flow easier through pipes. So there's a co property called conductivity that we're going to put here as well, usually written as a lowercase k. That's a property of the material. You'd look that up generally on a data table. Higher conductivity material is going to mean less resistance. It's also sometimes written as resistivity and put up here. Uh, resistivity would just be the inverse of conductivity. If we fill all this in, though, we get delta phi equals negative i times all this, delta x over a times k. And the thing is, we've been focusing so far on the difference in potential, voltage or pressure or temperature or whatever. But if we recenter this on current and actually solve for current, we can use this to predict how fast current is going to flow. So to solve for current, we'll just multiply both sides by negative 1 and multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. And we'll end up with current equals negative A times K times delta phi over delta X. 
So this is a much more useful way of writing the linear transport equation. In fact, this is usually what we mean when we say the linear transport equation. So let me put that up here and we'll investigate what that means in more detail. Current equals negative area times conductivity times delta phi over delta x. So we have several parts here. We've got the current and current in general is just going to be the rate of change of whatever is flowing. Delta stuff over delta time. How much of whatever stuff is flowing passes by per second? So how much fluid per second or how much charge per second or how much energy per second for thermal flow? Whatever is flowing over time. Then we've got the area of the, the cross-sectional area of the pipe or cross-sectional area of the wire or the surface area of the wall that heat is flowing through times conductivity of the material it's made from. And then this term here is also a derivative. It's the derivative or rate of change of potential, whatever the potential is, divided by how far you have to travel. And this is often called the potential gradient. Potential gradient. Gradient basically means a derivative with respect to position. How much something is changing per centimeter or per inch or per meter or whatever. So for instance, if we're looking at the heat flowing through this wall, it's not a sudden instantaneous change from high temperature to low temperature. If you've got, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius here and 10 degrees Celsius here, it's not like it suddenly jumps from 20 down to 10. It's a gradual shift, 20 degrees, 19 degrees, 18 degrees, and so on, through the wall. So the potential gradient is how much the temperature is changing per centimeter as you travel through the wall. Or for a pipe, it's how much the pressure drops per centimeter through the pipe, and so on. So that's the potential gradient. This is really nice mathematically because we now have a relationship between a derivative with respect to time and a derivative of something else with respect to distance. And the only difference between these is this constant multiplier, negative ak. And this is why this is called a linear equation. Linear in the mathematical context here, it doesn't mean it's moving in a straight line. Linear just means that one of the important variables equals a constant times the other important variable. So the negative ak could basically be thought of as a conversion factor that converts the potential gradient, the difference in the push per, per centimeter or per meter, converts that potential gradient into a current, how much stuff is flowing per second. So that's the linear transport equation. Next time we can take a look at some examples and what sort of changes this tends to lead to. Until then, learn from the past, reach for the future, and together we can build a better world.